Hi folks, it's John O'Leary from Horse Problems Australia and welcome to this week's podcast which is about the first mount up of the standard bred horse as we call them here in Australia or the pacer or the trotter um, the ones that run around the racetrack with a cart behind them in other words I've been asked dozens of times uh, over the last couple of years does my wife's double DVD on retraining the standard bred include mounting the standard bread for the first time and getting them going well it doesn't <clears throat> and i was asked yesterday by a lady uh, again the question and i said i'd do a podcast today um, about it because we have one here on the property who hasn't been ridden this breed of horse is probably the most reliable and sweetest breed of horse uh, in australia <clears throat> and um, if there was a law that said that every learner rider entering the industry had to mandatory own a standard bred, there would be 50,000 more people in the horse industry today in this country, rather than buying off the track thoroughbreds. To mount these up and to get going on them, it's just a simple matter of saddling them up, bridling them up, lunging them to make sure they're not girthy, and then getting on because they've been through the mill, they've had the works and jerks and they've had more harness and stuff hanging off them that uh, one can imagine and uh, they're pretty well bomb proof. All we need to do is to train them what legs mean to go forward because they're already, they're mouths, they've, they've got brakes, they've got steerings. However, the amateur doing this, even though I've, I am yet to meet one of these horses that has done the wrong thing um, to me at mount up you've always got to guard yourself of course that's that's horsemanship the art of reading the future and so you should first go and watch my podcast testing the lateral mouth and if your horse is ranked less than a six out of ten go and remouth it using my mouthing dvd because you you want control when you mount up you do not get on these horses using the rein control of the British Horse Society or the Pony Club system because that allows the horse to run through your hands and to get a fright and for things to go wrong. One of the only things that can worry these horses really is the mount up process where they wonder what, what in the hell you are doing trying to get on their back because a lot of these horses have been through a hard time um, and a lot of them and most of them get whipped pretty vigorously um, in the last 200 meters of a race and and they can be a little bit fragile of mind um, so the mount up rein control is as the Australian horsemen get on horses to stop them bucking which is why we want a good lateral mouth if the horse tries to jump around we've got to control it so as to reassure the horse that we're not going to hurt it but mainly that the horse can't learn the evasion of moving off or running away which will cement in its mind that we are definitely a prey animal however if our rein control is good enough and we can stop them and we can spin them until they are reassured and they can work out that we're not going to hurt them then um, it is a non-event they're all different of course I don't know this horse I've never I've never worked with this horse really only arrived here a couple of days he's, uh, he's very handy at hanging his tongue out he's a funny boy a lot of, a lot of them do this um, and um, he does it even without, <laughs> without a bridle on when he wants food etc now the 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 rain side of things come here mate so that people can see Woo. good boy we've got to be able to um, get the horse's head around and with the near side rein short the offside rein no slack whatsoever heading the opposite direction across the hand and a big handful of mane which helps if the horse isn't owned by a hairdresser which this one is because he's been at the mane and horsemen hate that because horsemen want big handfuls of mane to hang on to however we've got him here like that to hold his head around and to spin him if he tries to move and we just simply get on now you may depending on the horse good boy he's a lovely boy he's a lovely boy yes he is 
be slow about it. And you can see there he's, he's petrified. Good boy. He's a lovely boy. As you know, one of, the, one of the majority of reasons why horses buck is when they haven't seen someone above their eye. So I'm, I'm now going to do, we'll just cut the camera because of the amount of time allowable on the YouTube podcast to save time, but I'm now going to go through that process two or three more times and get off before I throw the leg over so that he can get his head around that I'm up there and that I'm above his eye and then we'll come back and, and I'll jump on. Okay, we'll cut the camera. He's a good boy. Good boy, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a, he's a, he's a good boy. Good boy. Good boy. He's a good boy. Keep his head around until you've got your other foot in the stirrup. And if he goes to run or jump, spin him in a circle to the left until you've got control of him. Now, the, the next... Now you can take your time on this, you can do this over a period of time. But um, for the purposes of this I'm going, to, I'm going to do everything right now. And you can with these horses, I've, I've, I'm yet to meet one that you can't. He's a lovely boy, he's a lovely boy. Now, how do we, as I said before, the only, only thing that you need to teach these horses is how to go forward from leg. Now he doesn't know what leg, it of co leg is of course, and if I kick the horse I'm likely to make him buck. And if I squeeze him hard, you can make horses buck. Probably not this breed, but other horses definitely. And remember that these horses are generated forward with a whip to the bum, to the rear end, uh, during the race. So they understand everything comes from behind, so the engine is in the back. So all we've got to do, association of ideas over the next couple of days, is to wiggle our, wiggle our legs, just wiggle them when you ask him to move forward. Use clucking, which you've, you've pre-programmed him on your lunging. You can see him listening. Or walk on, teach him English. Whatever you like to, make, to get him to go forward. But ultimately, you will turn around and just tap him on the backside with your hand. On a scale of 0 to 10, of course, not frightening the horse. Um, and all we want to do is to get two or three steps forward and then stop the horse and prove the brakes. So, walk on mate, walk on. Good boy, good boy. Whoa, now that's enough. Remember, confidence, looking after the horse, using empathy. Good boy. The only thing, only, only way that these horses can come unstuck is if you're too gung-ho and you frighten them because remember they can be fragile so they need to trust you. The first thing I do immediately is to see if I can get a backup of, on the horse and I did just to put in his mind reverse gear rating that he can head another direction other than forward. Good boy. Dwell between everything you do don't just run everything together. You can see the horse concentrating on me here. And then relax your reins also during during the dwell and the, re the reward and relief. And then we go again. Walk on. Flap the legs around. Walk on. <laughs> 